so now I have a um, a rattle that has sat out, gotten a little bit stiffer, and I can use my ribs. If you don't, if you have dried clay on your tools and you start to use them, it it will deposit. The dried clay will deposit onto the other clay, and normally it just ends up kind of ruining the surface that you're trying to go for. So it's always a good idea to clean your tools off before you use them. So you can see how smooth the clay really can get. And you know, even these little areas up here, I can still go ahead, smooth out with my finger. But now I really wanna think about the shape and design of my rattle. Um, at this point, if you wanted to have a more geometric shape, now is the time where you would begin that process. It's a multi-stage multi process where you work with the material um, as it continues to dry and get leather hard. But basically, you would kind of pat it on the table if you wanted to get you know, a cube or four-sided object. Right now it's got that air that's trapped inside so it keeps kind of poofing out and you can see that I've got kind of a crack there. That's actually a remnant from another design that I attempted that I didn't like so I quote unquote erased it by using my serrated rib and then cleaning it up again with my metal, my smooth metal rib. So you know it, this material is new for many of you and this project is designed for you to explore. Explore what the clay can do in the various stages of drying, explore the different kinds of ways that you can interact with it, with your tools, how much pressure you should use, how much you shouldn't use. Um, almost anything clay, clay is finicky and it is forgiving. Um, sometimes those, those two things don't seem to make sense side by side, but without, you know, barring literally popping it open, it would really take a lot to be able to say, well, this is ruined, I, I can't work with it anymore. And even if you do pop it open, you probably can put it back together with scratching and attaching. Um, so I kind of want this flattened teardrop kind of shape. So I'm just kind of patting it. And I want to think about the design. So, um, you know, you can use a few of paper if you work on paper or you will have your sketchbooks. It's a good idea to go ahead and sketch some things out. So if I've got my I'm a very loose, what we call it, loose sketcher, so I kind of <laughs> make a lot of lines. I want to reinforce or I want to highlight that part of the shape. So one way to do that is to do some kind of design that kind of follows that outside contour. So one thing that I could do is take my pin tool and just kind of incise a line now notice I'm not using it like a pen um, especially at this stage I'm really dragging it on that surface do the same thing to the other side your you know, yours does not have to be symmetrical. I like, on this piece, I would like my design to be symmetrical. That's just a choice. Okay, in this class you are designers. So, go ahead and, and own that. Um, I'm gonna see. You can probably tell I'm, I'm using a fair amount of pressure here and it's kind of, you know, it's, it's caving in a little bit.
but I, I'm not terribly concerned because it is full of air and the air is, is pushing back out against the clay. I mean, if I really pushed in and popped through, then yes, I've got a problem. Um, but the way that this tool, the reason that this tool is working is because I'm pushing in and then I'm turning it. And so that releases it from the clay rather than pushing it in and just trying to pull it back out. I'm not going to get as crisp of a impression. You can get texture from a lot of different places. So just start looking around and seeing what's available to you. This is beginning to kind of look like an acorn, which I don't know if I'm really into, but we'll see once I get this other row of circles on there. I'm also not necessarily trying to line them up. I mean, I said that I wanted it symmetrical, but that small of a detail, um, I just don't think that's not as important to me. I don't think it's a, it's a, um, really a pro or a con to the design. Like on this side, it, it does, and they do end up lining up. So I guess, you know, we can take a look at the two sides and see how much it matters. Okay, so now I have this, this kind of textured area here too. So as I'm shaking it, I've got different textures and surfaces that I can touch and feel. Um, I could do something down the center here. I could do something that might go ahead and again, highlight this kind of shape here. I kind of like the simplicity of this. Um, but let's just go ahead and throw some caution to the wind. Now it's going to end up looking like a bug resembling some kind of bug pattern probably. So again, I'm dragging the tool. I'm not using it like a pen. Kind of like that. Um, thinking about some vertical lines in here somewhere. Don't really know why. Just seems like something fun to contrast the other patterns that are going on. Now I work freehand a lot, um, and so if you're not comfortable doing that, it's okay. Feel free to, you know, really plan out your designs or not. So I said I was talking about vertical lines, and here I am doing horizontal lines. Don't really know how I feel about that. This. The line that I'm doing right now is kind of deep. I could erase it by using my serrated rib and then my, my um, smooth rib again. But at the same time, I would probably end up losing a lot of this other detail. So instead of trying to get rid of it all the way, I'm gonna try to minimize that visual impact by now giving it some vertical lines as opposed to continuing with that detail the whole way. Oops, sorry, out of frame. That's why I have this drawn on here. I did four videos before I realized that I was totally out of frame. So now I'm redoing them. 